We're going to go and jump into chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. Verse 1 is still running off of chapter 3. It says, Masters, be just and fair to your slaves. Remember that you also have a master in heaven. It is a terrible thing for a boss to cheat or mistreat his workers, but far worse for a Christian to do it. Now let's really jump into what chapter 4 wants us to understand. And it starts off with an encouragement for prayer. Verse number 2, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. This is what Paul is telling the church at Colossus. Give all or a large chunk of time and attention. The phrase could uh, uh, could well mean that Paul is telling them not to go to sleep when they pray, right? Not pray prayers that are just so boring, Um, prayers that will make anybody fall asleep. If prayer is how we fight our battles, we can't go in a battle barely conscious. We have to be awake and powerful and ready to go into war. Verse number three, pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Paul didn't ask for prayer for his personal needs, which he could, and there were many, but that God would open to us a door for the word. Paul wanted prayer that he would continue to make the gospel clear and evident, even if it meant more chains. Verse number four, Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. It just shows that even Paul wanted his message to be clearly evident. Many can preach the gospel, but the gospel is being, but is the gospel being preached clearly? Like me, I, I spent hours preparing for this here, making sure that I understood it and that I was speaking it clearly for you to understand it, right? He is even in the same way. Pray that. When I deliver the gospel, it's delivered with an understanding, with the right words, that I don't confuse people. The gospel is a gospel, but how we deliver it is totally different. Verse number five, living wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. The Christian life isn't only lived in the prayer closet. (laughs) There also must be practical, lived out Christianity which lives wisely towards those who are outside at work, at the grocery store, everywhere. We can't just be great Christians inside of this church building. It really is a testament who we are outside of this building. And verse number six says, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. We have to be attractive, not physically attractive, but attractive in our speech. How we speak has a lot to do with this. So we must let our speech always be with grace. Remember, we are a representative of Christ, an ambassador. Now here's Paul's final instructions and greetings starting at verse 7. Tychicus will give you a full report about how I am getting along. He's a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves with me in the Lord's work. Apparently, the Colossian Christians didn't know who he was, um, so he would be carrying this letter to him. So Paul was mostly uh, uh, letting them know that this is a beloved brother. You can trust him, and he's faithful. That what the report he's handing you, it's a report from me, and it's to be received 100%. Verse number 8. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we are doing and to encourage you. Remember, he's in chains, so he had to set a messenger to send the letters that he was writing from prison. Uh, Tychicus is mentioned in Acts verse 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 4, as one of the men who came with Paul from the Roman province of Asia to Jerusalem. Verse number 9, I am also sending Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. He and Tychicus will tell you everything that's happening here. Paul was letting, uh, you know, Paul was letting the Colossian Christians know that Onesimus was now one of you. Verse 10, Aristarchus, who is in prison with me, sends you his greetings, and so does Mark, Barnabas's cousin. As you were instructed before, make Mark welcome if he comes your way. A lot of times when we read things like this, we kind of glance over them like they don't really mean much. They kind of, kind of seem boring. But it's very important that we understand exactly what they mean because it makes us see that, wow, these were actual people and 
they had cousins and they were related to others they had a back history and we knew them before they were Christ followers and it really allows the gospels to become real that this actually did take place because we probably would talk this way too it seems that Aristarchus had an interesting habit of being with Paul in hard times getting him thrown into prison as well, and that's where he is with him as he's writing this. And because Paul identified Mark in terms of his relationships with Barnabas, it seems that the Colossian Christians knew who Barnabas was. Verse 11, Jesus, not Jesus Christ, but Jesus, the one we call Justice, also sends his greetings. These are the only Jewish believers among my co-workers. They are working with me here for the kingdom of God. And what a comfort they have been! At that time, Paul only had three fellow workers with a Jewish heritage. Paul was also Jewish, Jewish heritage. Yet these three did a great work. They proved to be a comfort to Paul. That's good to know. 12. Epaphras, a member of your own fellowship and servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you. Remember that. Asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. It seems like Epaphras was a prayer warrior, right? And Epaphras worked diligently at it, especially knowing the danger of the false teaching in Colossus. So Epaphras prayed that the Colossian Christians would stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Verse number 13, I can assure you that he prays hard for you and also for the believers in Laodicea and Herapolis. Prayer is hard work. He literally said he prays hard for you but he is willing to labor in it because he knew the power of it. Prayer is sometimes not easy. It can be laborious, hours, prayer warfare, right? Energy. And this was a prayer warrior, as so should we. Verse number 14, Luke, the beloved doctor, the one who wrote the book of Luke in the Gospels, sends his greetings and so does Demas. This is the one passage that informs us that Luke, the human author of the Gospel of Luke, And the book of Acts was a physician. 15. Please give my greetings to our brothers and sisters at Laodicea and Nympha and the church that meets in her house. Really having no buildings of their own like we have today, the early church met in house churches. Because a few few house churches were large, there were usually several house churches in a city with a pastor and elder over each one. Verse number 16, after you have read this letter, pass it on to the church at Laodicea so they can read it too. And you should read the letter I wrote them. When Paul and the other apostles wrote these letters to the churches, the letters were simply publicly read in the congregations. It was a way for the apostles to teach that the church, even when he was not there with them physically. Verse 17, almost done. And say to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry of the Lord that he gave you. I love this. This is encouragement to him. And it shows that God gives us ministry to his people. Three things, it could, a few things it could show us is true ministry is received in the Lord. And ministry may be left unfulfilled. Verse number 18, to wrap it all up. Here is my greeting in my own handwriting. I think he's just saying, I wrote this personally. It wasn't just someone listening to me. This is my own handwriting. I took the time to do it. This is my signature. He says, remember my chains. May God's grace be with you. Paul really uh, is referring to his sufferings, not as a plea for sympathy, but just they're a plea and a, a claim to his authority. And this guarantees his right to speak. And he ends it with may God's grace be with you, just a blessing to the people in the church of the Colossians. Family, thank you so much as an overview of chapters three and four rounding out this book. When we dive in, we learn so much of these books and we start to know these were real people with real sufferings and they were really going through things like we were in today's days and they pushed past to do the work of the Lord as we should today. So I hope that encourages you. Love you. Let's learn and grow together, and we'll see you in the next book overview.